Hello and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can set up controls that can control other elements in our scene, such as this wheel and these particles, and this bulb being controlled by these buttons, and this slider being controlled by this lever. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at, and it really helps to fund these videos. So we're in a scene with a bunch of the controllables that we've previous set up. And what we're going to do is allow these controllables to control the value of other elements in the scene. So what we'll have is this lever will actually control the position of this slide controllable. And we won't be able to manually move the slide controllable. We have these fire particles here, which will be able to control the emission rate of these particles based on this wheel here. And then we're going to have these buttons here which turn on or off this light and the color of this light is going to be controlled by wherever this slider is so let's go through each of these and we'll set them up as we need to start with we'll look at our lever so what we're going to do is whenever our lever is moved we're going to get our slider to follow it so if we look at our slider and go to the slider controllable all we need to do here is make sure our move to target value is ticked and what that's going to mean now is whenever we set our target value, that's going to move where we want it to go. So to do that with our lever, if we go to our lever and then in our lever controllable, all we want to do now is on the normalized value changed event, we're going to add another listener. And in there, we're going to grab, drag and drop our slider controllable. And then the function, all we want to do is linear drive facade and we want to set the target value. So whenever this value is moved, it's automatically going to move that value. Because that value is moved, we're going to get the step logic that we set up in our slider. So we'll come back and we'll sort that out in a moment. For now, let's just collapse our lever and our slider and we'll move over to the wheel so we can control the rate of our emission of our particles. So for our wheel, what we're going to do is just create a little bit of custom code that allows us to control the particles emission. So if we look at our particles emission, we can see if we look at the emission tab, the rate over time between 25 and zero, zero being completely stopped, and then 25 being where it's flowing at the full rate that we want. So what we need is a little script that can just control that value for us. So let's create a new script now. I'm just gonna create that in asset and then in scripts. And I'm just gonna create a new script called particle controller. And I'm gonna open that script in my script editor, this being Visual Studio. And the first thing we need to do is just clean up the boilerplate code. We're not going to need these first two lines and we're not going to need the update or start method. So the first thing I want to do is just create a reference to my particle system. So we can just use a public field for that. So I've created the reference to the particle system I'm going to be using and I've named that variable particles. Now what I want to do is set up a method that just allows me to control the emission rate of that particle system. So I'm going to create a new public void method just called set emission rate that takes a float value. And now in this method, all I need to do is get the current emission module from our particle system, and then we can set the emissions right over time value. So first of all, let's get the current emission module. And what this line is doing is we're creating a variable called emissions that is an emission module. And we're getting that from the particle system that we're going to inject, and we're going to get the emission module from it. And once we've got that emission module, we can just set the right over time of that emissions to whatever values passed in here. And there we go, that line does that. It just says emissions dot write over time is whatever value we put in. And that's all the code we need to write. So we can save that and go back to our scene. So then on our fire particles, we can scroll down and we can add that particle controller component. And then the particle controller component just needs a reference to this particle system. So we just grab, drag and drop it onto there. Now we can call this particle controller from our wheels facades event. So if we go to our wheel controller and then go to our wheel, if we remember we wanted zero to be nothing and 25 to be maximum. So we can use our step range for that. So if I've got this set to zero and the maximum set to 25, whenever our range changes now, so our step value changed, all we need to do is add a listener to there, go to our fire particles, grab, drag and drop that. And then if we look on the functions, we should have our particle controller. And all we need to do is a dynamic float set emission rate. So when this is all the way to its zero value, our particles will emit zero, which means nothing will come out. And as we gradually move that round, these particles will get higher and higher until it gets all the way around to the top. And then it's emitting a max range of 25, which is what we wanted here. 
And there we go, we've set up our wheel now. So when we rotate it from a minimum value of minus 90, we'll have no particles coming out. And then as we gradually move it around to a maximum range of 90, particles will come out at a faster rate. And now we've got our lever set up that controls our slider, and we've got our wheel set up that controls our emission rate of our particles. The next thing we're gonna do is set up these buttons. So when we press them, this light comes on and turns off. This first button is once we press it once, it makes the lights come on and then it will turn off after a number of seconds. And we've got this button here, which is a toggle button. So when we press it, the light will stay on and then we press it again, the light will turn off. But before we do that, we need to make sure we've got a material that sets the color of our light based on where our slider is. So what we're gonna do is create a new game object to hold some logic to do this. So I'm gonna create a game object and I'm gonna call this light bulb materials. And the logic we're gonna do here is I'm gonna create another empty game object here. So we've got three colors that it can be. It can be blue, it can be orange, and it can be red. So I'll call this first one blue light bulb. And what happens on blue light bulb, we're going to add a new component that is the empty event proxy emitter. And all we want this to do is when we call this proxy emitter, we're just gonna add two listeners. And these listeners are just gonna change the material that is on our light bulb. So we've got the sphere and we've got the cylinder. So we're just gonna grab the sphere, drag that in, grab the cylinder, drag that in. And then we're going to select mesh renderer and material. And the material is going to be, if we look at our materials, it's going to be our blue material. So grab, drag and drop that and do the same for cylinder. So on its mesh renderer, material, select blue, grab, drag and drop. And now we can just copy this and do our orange and our red. So I'll copy this and I'll rename this to orange light bulb. And then again, instead of blue in here, we just grab, drag and drop our orange material. And again, let's create one for red. And again, just grab, drag and drop the red material for the red one. And finally, we do need to create one for the off material as well. So we're just gonna create one called off light bulb. And all the off is, is using the light gray material. So we grab, drag and drop light gray. So now whenever we call one of these event proxy emitters, it's just gonna change our light bulb for us. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna have all of these disabled by default, except our off. We never want to disable our off because we always want to be able to turn it off or set it back to that gray color. And then if we look in our slider, We've got our three logic steps, step zero, step one, and step two. We can see step zero would be our blue color, step one would be our orange color, and step two would be our red. So what we want to do in each one of our step logics is when we get to that step logic, we want to turn on the material that we are actually setting. So if step zero is received, what we want to do is turn on the blue material, but also turn off the orange and the red proxy emitters because when we run this in a minute, we don't want these two to run. So when we get to blue, we're gonna turn this one on and we're gonna turn these gamma objects off. And then on step one, we want to do the same thing, but this time we want to turn the blue off, the orange on and the red off. So blue goes off and orange goes on and red goes off. And then finally for step three, we want the same again, but this time we want the blue to go off, the orange to go off and the red to come on. And what we're doing here is we're turning the game object on. So when we call these empty event proxy emitters, what will happen is if they're off, the code won't run. And this will allow us to change the color of this light bulb because we're gonna try and run all three of these, but only the one that's on will actually run. So again, just quickly, if I just turn these off and then the red one is on. Let's set up some game logic now that allows us to turn our light bulb on and off. So I'm gonna create another empty game object to hold this logic. And I'm going to call it light bulb logic and I'm going to create another empty game object in here and I'm going to call it light bulb on and I'm just going to add an empty event proxy emitter to here as well and then all we need to do is when the light bulb is on we just want to call all three of these so the blue light bulb the orange light bulb and the red light bulb and we just want to call the receive on the empty event proxy emitter in each one so then what will happen here is when we call this light bulb on it will set the material to whichever light bulb color is actually active based on where the slider is. So if two of these are off and only red is on, because we're calling all three, if these are off already, they won't actually do anything. And the only one that will do something is the red one, because that's the only one that was switched on within our step logic. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna call it light bulb off. And all light bulb off needs to do is if I delete two of these, all we need to do here is call our off light bulb empty event proximeter and call receive. 
And this is kind of a redundant thing because we could call this directly, but it just makes it neater to keep it all separated like this. We're going to keep this super simple now. We're just going to have it so if we press this button and it gets down to the bottom, it turns the light bulb on. And then when it comes back to the top, it turns the light bulb off. And we're going to press this. So when we press it down, it goes to the bottom and it stays on. We're going to leave this on. And then we press it again, it comes back to the top, it goes off. We're not going to worry about the state between the two that we could push this down while this is down and it would also mess that up. We could look at more complex logic to handle that, but we're just going to keep it simple for this video. So to do that, what we're going to do is look at this button here and then look in the drive events. And then what we want to do is look at our minimum event reach. So that's when it gets to the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, we're going to consider it on. And all we're going to do is call our light bulb on logic. So empty event proxy emitter and then call receive. And then the maximum reached when it gets back to the top, all we're going to do here is call our light bulb off method. So empty event proxy meter and then call receive. And we can collapse that one down. And now if we look into our toggle, we already set up this toggle action already. So when it's activated, that's pushed down. So we're going to add another event here. And we're going to add the light bulb on and call the empty event proxy meter. And then in deactivated, we're just going to call light bulb off. And then again, the empty event proxy meter receive. And there we go, we've set up these two buttons now that should control this light bulb. And this light bulb's material will be controlled by where we've set this slider to. And that slider is controlled by this lever. And again, this fire in the middle is controlled by this wheel. So there we go, we've set up some controllables now and they're controlling values of other things in the scene. So let's save this, run it and see it working. So we're now in the scene. If we go over to our light bulbs first, by default they're set to orange. So if we press our button, we can see our light bulb flashes on and off and if we press our toggle it comes on orange and then turns off if we go over to our lever and if we move our lever we can see that slider is now following wherever i push my lever to and if i release it and it goes to the red if i go back over to the buttons and then i press the button we can see it now flashes red and now let's go back to the lever and again if i grab it and drag it all the way to blue and then go back to the buttons we can see now our light bulb is blue and then finally, let's have a look at our wheel. We can see there are no particles coming out. And if I turn my wheel, we can see the particles slowly start coming out. And the more I turn it, the thicker they get. And then if I turn it back the other way, they will start fading out to nothing again. And there we go. We've set up a bunch of different controls in our scene that can control other elements within the scene. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. And I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.